In this short video, we will understand the very basics of one-way ANOVA in a very simple way with help of some relevant examples. So don't go anywhere else. Just sit back, relax and enjoy this video. How using the one-way ANOVA, is there any difference between the group 1, group 2 and group 3? What is one-way ANOVA? One-way ANOVA. So ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance. And in one way ANOVA, there is one factor or independent variable and compared three or more levels of conditions. How it is different from two way ANOVA? In one way ANOVA, there is only one factor or independent variable. In two way ANOVA, there are two factors here. So in this video, we'll just talk about one way ANOVA. Test. So ANOVA enables us to test for significance of difference among more than two sample means. It is basically an extension of t-test. In t-test, we compare two sample means. But what if, if there are more than two samples? For that, we have one-way ANOVA. For variance, one-way ANOVA assumes that the variance within each group are roughly equal. This is also known as the homogeneity of variance assumption. For omnibus test, it tells you if there is any difference among the mean, but not which specific groups are different from each other. For that, we have some additional tests like post hoc tests, which are needed to identify the specific differences between those groups. Then F statistics and P value. The test output includes an F statistics value and the P value. So higher the F statistics and lower the P value, when P is less than or equal to 0 0.05, leads to rejection of H0 and suggests some significant difference among the groups. Let us now look at the test statistics for one way ANOVA. We will start with the null hypothesis. It states that the mean for all the groups are same or equal, irrespective of whether there are three groups, five groups or seven groups. So it's, it is written by H0 which is denotes the null hypothesis. Mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3 so on up to mu n where mu denotes the group mean and n denotes the number of groups and if there are three groups then h0 is equal to mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3 for alternate hypothesis the mean are different for at least one pair of group how do we write h1 for alternate hypothesis mu1 is not equal to mu2 is not equal to mu3 so on up to mu n again same the mu denotes the group mean and n denotes the number of groups now for calculating ANOVA you need to know two parameters variance between and variance within if this ratio of variance between and variance within if it is greater than one then you reject the null hypothesis but if this ratio is less than or equal to 1, then you fail to reject the null hypothesis. We we'll see this more of one-way ANOVA application with help of some examples. Let us take an example. Researchers want to investigate whether the different types of exercise program leads to different weight loss outcome or not. So they randomly assign some participants to three groups, aerobics, group one, group two for strength training, and group three for yoga. Now they want to evaluate to see if there is any significant difference in the mean weight loss among the three exercise groups. So he has some results after that, after 12 weeks. So let's see using how using the one ANOVA, is there any difference between the group one, group two, and group three? So the step one would be to state the null and the alternate hypothesis. So null hypothesis would be there is no significant difference in the mean weight loss among the three exercise group, whether it is aerobic exercise, strength exercise or yoga exercise. So we state uh, H0 as a null hypothesis which states mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3. That means there is no difference in the mean weight loss. Our alternate hypothesis would be there is a significant difference in the mean weight loss among the three exercise group. We write it as H1, mu1 is not equal to mu2 is not equal to mu3. 
So that is our null and alternate hypothesis here. The second step would be calculate the mean and the variance for each group. So we have this data, which is the weight loss after 12 weeks for each of this group. Group 1 for aerobics, group 2 for strength, and group 3 for yoga. The blue text that you see in this table is the actually the group mean for each group. Like for group 1, if you uh, take average, it comes to as 8. Similarly for group 2, if you take an average mean, it comes to 6.4. Similarly for group 3, which comes to be as 4.4. Now you need to calculate the overall mean, which is nothing but the average of all the group mean for all the values. And it comes to as 6.27. Next, we need to calculate the between group variation, which is like 5 into 5 is the number of entries in the each group multiplied by 8. 8 is the group mean for group 1 minus 6.27. That is the overall mean raised to power 2 plus 5 again for group 2. We need to calculate into 6.4 is the group mean for group 2 minus 6.27 ka whole square plus 5 into 4.4 minus 6.27 is about 2. That is how we calculate the between group variation, which comes to as 2.5335. Now we need to calculate the within group variation, which is summation xij minus summation xj ka whole square. Where summation is the symbol that means sum, xij is the ith observation in the group j, and xj is the mean of group j. So we'll put uh, values in this formula for group 1, 8 minus 8 ka whole square. So 8 is the individual value. So we subtract individual values from the group mean and square it. So like for group 1, it is 8 minus 8 ka whole square, 10 minus 8 ka whole square, 9 minus 8 ka whole square. So some, something like it goes up to a last digit, 6 minus 8 ka whole square, which comes to as 10. Similarly, we do it for group 2. 6 minus 6.4 ka whole square, uh, minus 6.4 ka whole square and so on. And we can get value as 5.2. Similarly for group 3, we'll calculate all the values. It comes to as 5.2. Now we need to for, but within cooperation, we need to add all three groups values. So we get 10 plus 5.2 plus 5.2, it is at 20.4. Now we have calculated within group variation as well as between group variation. We go back to the same formula for calculating the ratio. It is variance within, but by variance within. We put these values here, 32.5335 and 20.4. We get ratio as 1.5945. This ratio is actually greater than one, which means that we will reject the null hypothesis. So null hypothesis states that there is a significant difference in the mean weight loss among the three excise groups. That means there is no, uh, I mean, we cannot say that they all have same uh, results. Let us see some questions on one way ANOVA. So if you're still watching this video, don't forget to subscribe this video, press the bell icon, like this video, share this with all your friends and colleagues, and do let me know your suggestions on this video in the comment box below. Read the questions carefully and leave your answers in the comment section below. First question. What is the primary purpose of one-way ANOVA? A. Taste the difference between two group means. B. Taste the difference between the three or more group means. C. Analyze the correlation between the variables. And D. Test for normal distribution. Question 2. What does the F statistics in one way ANOVA compare? A. Variance between the group to variance within the group. Mean between the group to mean within the group. C. Median between the group to median within the groups. And D. Standard deviation between the group to standard deviation within the groups. Question 3. In one way ANOVA, what does assumption is related to the quality of variance within the group? Homogeneity of a variance, normal distribution, independence of observations, linearity. You can leave your answers in the comment section below.